I think Roland made a really uh, legitimate point here. Um, I will say, you know, th th a lot of black men sometimes feel like they're ignored or they're put down, particularly sometimes even by black women in the media. So this is not that. But I do hear Roland's point that felt ignored. But you feel ignored and then you go over to the other side. The oppressed feel oppressed. So then you go and try to align with the oppressor. So I'm not putting black men down, but sometimes it's like, well, some of you Kevin Samuels following Tariq Nasheed quoting people, please look at the truth and see what's happening and get in line with some of the black women. It's majority, like he said, vote Democrat. But that margin of people who can be plucked away from your people and go advance policies that harm your people, I just don't understand that. What's going on, Rebel family? Tiffany Cross tells black men to get in line and get behind black women and follow what black women are doing. But before we get to the video, go ahead and like, share, and subscribe to the channel. So, Tiffany Cross, the host of MSNBC's The Cross Connection, basically uh, a liberal shield, um, had some guests on her program and uh, she basically told black men to get in line and, and called out a few people. Um, Kevin Samuels, who's who's been gone for uh, five months now, as if he's uh, the reason why Stacey Abrams is losing black male support. And then, of course, uh, she called out Tariq Nasheed as well, who has been quite vocal and 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 rightfully so that if the Democrats aren't doing anything for black men or black people specifically, then why should we vote? But I want to take a look at this uh, exchange between um, Tiffany and Roland and, 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 and another simp or two on, on the program here. I do want to shift gears and talk about um, the midterm elections coming yep. up. I want to turn to Georgia, which is on everyone's minds because less than two months out from the midterms um, and at the center of the conversation among many black men, that rarely happens. And I want to center black men today. Right now, we could be looking at a split ticket. Senator Raphael Warnock is leading in his race against Herschel Walker, but Stacey Abrams is behind Governor Kemp. Now, Abrams says if black men vote for her, she'll win. But the math ain't really math in there. And I know uh, Roland has a lot of thoughts about that. I want to bring into the conversation Cliff Albright. He's the co-founder of Black Voters Matter Fund. And Terrence Woodbury, he's a Democratic pollster and CEO and founding partner of Hit Strategies. Cliff, I do want to start with you since you're um, on Cliff the ground is the first there uh, in Georgia. We'll get to the, uh, the debate between uh, Walker and Warnock in a second. But just being on ground there, Cliff, what do you make of that? Like, I, you know, our black... Black men large in number enough to decide this race for Stacey Abrams? Or is this just a headline that's, you know, more yellow journalism and sensationalism than truth? Yeah, good morning, Tiffany. Great to be here with you. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, black males, black men voters make up enough of a block where, where we can be a part of what the difference is. And we got to keep in mind, we're talking about a state where in the presidential election in, in 20, the difference was famously those 11,700 votes that Trump Trump was trying to find some plays. Um, so, so in a situation like that, yeah, black men as a voting block can be a big part of the equation. And, you know, whether or not they come out, we come out, black men in Georgia come out and, and support Stacey at the same rate that black women do um, is a legitimate question. You know, now certainly... Uh, no, the legitimate question is what are black men going to get for that vote? It's not about whether or not they support they should support Stacey Abrams at the same rate as black women. But what are black men going to get? That's what black men are asking, and no one's answering that question. Black men aren't going to bear the brunt of, of what happens in this election on their own, no more than black women should, should bear the brunt of it. You know, some, some white folks could have to wake up and, and actually do the right thing in the state if they if they wanted to move forward. But I think that it is smart to to, to raise this issue. Um, because at the end of the day, and, and you know, we hate to admit it, but there is some number of, of, of black men that will just just refuse to vote. It's the sexism, it's the patriarchy that just refused to, to vote for a woman, whether that woman is, is Stacey Abrams or, or whether it was Hillary Clinton in in um in sixteen. And that's an issue that we have to address. Again, that's not the majority of us. It's, it's, it's not a plurality of us. But we have to address that. And we have to be willing to call that out and call it call it what it is. Okay, I had to let this simp finish his statement. Anytime you hear a man, especially a black man, talking about patriarchy, uh, misogynoir, uh, any of this stuff, instantly dis disregard and discredit anything that that dude has to say from that point forward. 
because black men do not benefit from any such patriarchy the patriarchy that these people are talking about is white supremacy and only white people benefit from it black men do not benefit from anything being because they are male whenever you ask these idiots the question okay since since i'm a male i'm a black male and i somehow benefit from a, a male patriarchy tell me mr smart guy or mr simp mr dude looks like a goddamn chipmunk with with nuts in his mouth literally but anyway tell me what benefits specifically do black men have over white women when you ask them that question they become dumbfounded oh well we know white supremacy blah, blah. i'm gonna shut up then okay so I, I i had to let the simp play because i want i want you guys to hear this anytime these guys start talking and they start talking about the patriarchy they're on some crap and it's funny because the number one bootlick here democrat bootlick I, well i was surprised that he called him out roland martin roland martin's coming next and watch what roland martin does here yeah all right so so we so cliff mentioned hillary clinton terrence talked about obama we have to take this thing back a decade mm -hmm. okay why am i wearing this shirt it's my alpha shirt first of all we right. vote but here's why black men are the second most loyal voting bloc of the democratic party who's number one black women mm -hmm. so let's just be real clear who black men are voting for in 2012 there was a nine point gap between black men and black women obama romney so people try to make this out to be about totally sexism that's not true with two men running and black men black men were not happy with obama they felt he Why? should have done more because on the issue of economics yeah. and criminal justice and no things along those lines and so what then happens okay so roland martin totally debunked the guy's point that should have been the end of it because you know roland martin is right and we understand roland martin is is auditioning for a job here he's he's basically saying to the democrats and, and a matter of fact he's been saying this on this tiffany cross show for uh six months now he's been repeating the same talking points on this show for six months they haven't listened because they had a, they had other segments that i i, I didn't want to include on, in here because it was gonna make the video way way too long but Roland Martin has been saying this and he's really auditioning to say, look, I can get black men in line, hire me, hire my media company, hire me as a strategist. I can show you how to get black men, uh, the, uh, the black male vote. And uh, that's pretty much what he's doing. Now, I'm not knocking him for that. The only thing about it is, is if, if you're going to do that, then be true and, and try to really, you know, uh, push or pass agendas that are going to uh, help black men, not just, you know, get you in the good graces of the Democrat Party. You go to 16, now it's a 13 point gap. You go to 20, now it expands. But here's a race people ignore, and Terrence knows this as well. Tom Tillis, the architect of voter suppression in North Carolina, was getting around 18% uh, as well. Why? Because Democrats That's were right. ignoring that constituency. Black women also organized and mobilized to force the Democratic Party to pay much attention to them. Yeah, and in that's many false. cases, black men within the party have not actually done that. So what you're seeing are black men. See, and, and that's false. That's a, that, that is his way to say, okay, well, look, I am still with you, black women. Let me throw a shot at black men. Black women are not organizing to get anything with the Democratic Party because they're not getting anything. You, you fool. You butter biscuit eating boy. Uh, black women are not getting anything we see right now we saw we we just recently saw the report coming out about the evictions that black women are being hit the hardest um being evicted now that the eviction moratorium is over black women are being the ones who have been hit the hardest with uh being evicted how 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 are black women uh being helped by by you know, what what strategy did they get together and say hey pay more attention to me it's just a divide and conquer they understand that they have a they have a secure voting block they, they've they've locked and boxed black women to where they're not going to come off of voting for the democrats at this point they won't stay home and they're definitely not going to vote for uh, republicans and which i'm not saying to vote for the republicans but definitely at some point you have to you have to leverage your vote and say hey look i'm not voting we're not going to vote again until we get until you start pushing policies specifically for us to help us and black women aren't getting anything they're just getting attention 
but that's only to shame black men. I'm paying attention to me. You're ignoring what's happening when it comes to economics. You're ignoring me when it comes to the critical issues. And so what the Democratic Party has not done is create a specific strategy to target those individuals because it comes down to numbers. Warnock beat Kelly Leffler by less than 100,000 votes. And so if you're the Democratic Party and you're, to you're just ignoring these numbers, what did Terrence just say? You are ignoring the potential to win. You should be trying to get every vote. And I'm just going to go ahead and put it out here because someone has to say it. The fundamental problem with the Democratic Party is that white strategists are controlling the money, mm -hmm. are controlling the strategy. Yeah. Yes, African Americans are having input, but if you're trying to win, you better listen to black people. You better fund these initiatives. Otherwise, you're going to lose. And that gap yeah. is going to widen. And fund candidates. Fund candidates. Instead of meddling around in Republican elections, trying to put one over the other because you think they're easier to beat, yeah. fund, fund candidates. candidates. But also off-year strategies. Right. You can't come talk to black men in the middle of September. Yeah. The election is November. They, and I called it. They should have been doing this in January yeah. after Biden got inaugurated to build up a, a program so when elections come, now you properly prep. Yeah, and invest in black media. Okay, so invest in black media. That's that's a that's a a, a bone to roll in. But notice they did they they didn't say anything about actually offering tangible benefits, something that is tangible, not not just um, not just uh, just happy go lucky. Uh, oh, we're gonna do this for no actual tangible things that black men can measure, things that are will make their lives decidedly better because that's what politics is for quid pro quo you do something for me i do something for you i give you my vote you do something for me i give you money to, to fund your campaigns you do something specifically for my group and none of them said that they said all these other things and then of course here let, let, let's let her finish it brother we know that black, owned. black media black now he said black owned, owned media black owned media yeah not black targeted media which i feel i feel rolling on that no no big deal if you can if you can pimp them for some money go ahead and do it but don't do it at our expense and then you you get there and then you start talking to these strategies and you say oh well i'm on black man's side and then it's still the same runaround but i'm gonna i'm gonna play one other thing here and it's it's by that simp again cliff albright is that you see some that are like oh yeah i'm gonna come out i'm gonna vote for warnock but in that in that gubernatorial race, oh, I'm not really feeling um, uh, Stacey Abrams or Kemp, right? And, and and some of them will be honest. I've been in conversations with men, and some of it is faith based. I've been in conversations with brothers that say, I just don't think a woman should be governor, right? I don't think a black <laughs> woman should be governor. I don't think they were mean to be. I have had that conversation. Dude, dude is lying. Man, that's a big lie, man. That dude did not have those type of conversations. But anyway, I want to pull up this. I want to take a look at uh, who who is Tiffany Cross, right? <sighs> Tiffany Cross is like 43 years old. She was born in Cleveland, Ohio, a black American woman, raised to a single mom. And I'm, I'm, I'm only pointing that out here because just trying to do some uh, research about her background, I, I couldn't find anything about her father. So... It, it led me to start believing, okay, well, maybe she was raised by a single mom, right? And, you know, this is her mom. I guess this is her and her brother. I guess she got a brother. None of that information was, this is the only stuff that she put out. Tiffany, it's funny because she, her mouth, Tiffany Cross has her mother's mouth here. I, I wonder if she has the same type of voice. Tiffany Cross is, her voice is as irritating as, um, Cynthia G. In fact, she sounds like Cynthia G. Matter of fact, you know what? Let me play that again. I want you guys to hear it. I ain't going to play Cynthia J. I can't take her. But if you listen to her voice, it sounds like it sounds like Cynthia G's voice. Hold on. Listen, I think Roland made a really uh, legitimate point here. Look, um, I will say, you know. <laughs> can you imagine? Dusty, Bell, Dusty Beta Male Coon. Really made a very good point. I'm like, oh my a lot God. of black men sometimes feel like they're ignored or they're put down, particularly sometimes even by black women in the media. So this is not that. But okay, I just wanted you to hear that voice because that sounds like, uh, that sounds like, uh, uh, what is her name? Um, damn, I just thought of her. Cynthia G. That's what it's, that's what it sounds like to me. But anyway, I want to I want to go I want to jump over to something. So they're talking about Stacey Abrams said, "Hey, black men." You know, I will win if black men vote for me. And let's go to let's 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 go to Stacey Abrams page here. 
This is Stacey Abrams' page, her, her campaign page. And I want to point out something here. I thought this was very, very funny here. So, Stacey Abrams came out about a week or so ago, maybe two weeks now. I don't know. Uh, she has a, a an agenda for black men. So, I was like, all right, put, you know, about to do the, you know, pull this, pulling up the information for this video. And first thing I did was I scrolled down to the bottom. I just scrolled the page. First, I scrolled the home page and I'm looking, okay, where's the, where's the link for black men? All right. So get down to the bottom. Then I'm like, okay, wait a minute. I mean, okay, I'm reading all these about policy, economic, and I'm like, okay, well, hold on, wait a minute. Maybe, maybe I missed it. So I go back up to the top and I said, okay, well, okay so i said so maybe she got some drop down so i started okay she got dropped so i hit policy and i'm going through the policies and i'm like wait a minute where the hell would black men fall under here hold on let me zoom in so you guys can so you guys can adequately see what i'm looking at here because you you won't believe i want you to i want i want you guys i want to zoom in here i want you to see this all right so so I click on the policy and look, look what we see here, economic, education, social, and I'm going, I'm like, okay, wait a minute. So I go back, news, nothing, okay, resources, I'm like, okay, I said, wow, her homepage mentions nothing about black men. I, her it's it's a hidden link there's no there's no link to her page so yet again black men are being treated like stepchildren here All right you go to the policy i mean look look at what we see here she makes sure she oh i'm sorry you guys can't see it look look at what we have here seniors immigrate immigration lgbt disability I'm like whoa wait a minute so I'm, I'm looking all around here. I don't see anything about black men. Okay. I don't see it. Voting rights. That's the only thing that apply to black people. It's the only thing mentioned here. Understand that black women are, are covered under women. So they'll be happy with the, 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 the women aspect of, of everything. All right. It, uh, what do they call it? Uh, reproduction reproductive rights harassment and all this kind of stuff I said wow I actually had to just google Stacey Abram black men black men's agenda it's under policy it's it's under the it's under the policy URL here or the policy folder it should be a here but they have no it's a hit it's a hidden page it's no link but anyway so when we go in here so it's, 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 this is an agenda for black men or so it says it's an agenda for black men all right black men deserve leadership as as, as they see him okay you go here so what do you what the first thing you start seeing okay it's talking about black men established for small business that could be anybody red tape to start your business who are they talking to allow small multiple small companies to jointly bid what Increased purchasing for from black owned businesses, uh, you know, so she got black owned there. I said, okay, F family farms, uh, it's not necessarily black. Uh oh, minority, non minority. As soon as I saw that, I stopped reading because I knew I knew it was coming, and there's the trick bag minority. And you're gonna keep going through, and you're gonna see everything, everything else in here that it's all not about black men it's gonna it's gonna mention somewhere else anybody else but black men and that's that's the way it's gonna go but anyway i want to um last thing i'm gonna do is take a look at this art article here so it says atlanta newspaper highlights uh stacy abrams troubling struggles with black voters it says black voters in the georgia race okay now the recent AGC poll found that Abrams has 79% of support from black voters, black voters. However, 
the outlet reported Democrats typically poll at least 10 percentage points higher with black voters. So they're thinking it's about 89 percent. Abrams support with black men, according to AGC, is at 75 percent. So what what is this saying? Like, what is what? It, like, OK, so she has a problem with all black voters, but then you specifically want to call out black men because it's obviously about blaming black men. Even to sit up here and say, if black men vote for me, um, you know, I'm not a black man, but I've been raised by one. I'm always going to say that going to say that if black men stand with me and vote for me and work with me, we can change. the future. What are you going to give black men? You're not answering the question. And she's just as bad as uh, I, I can't stand her voice. Every time she talks, I feel like I want to throw up. All right. Oh, my God. So if black men vote for me, she said will win and then of course they they uh speak to some brother uh some black man who's uh standing with kemp or whatever you know but anyway i'm not gonna keep going on that's you know that's this tiffany cross thing here she's she's on this whole thing i mean there was so much um for tiffany cross here that i could cover you know in terms of her and Jory Reid put together a, you know, a black women are the culture. Like, to, you know, it's just like this thing to totally erase black men when, when, when the black man is, the, is it really is the black man. That's the culture, the American black man. Because if you're talking about anything cool in society, it's black men who did it, whether it's, 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 it's from hip hop, uh, you know, um, that, that portion of the culture, um, you know anything else from fashion sense or whatever you know uh, yeah beyonce and some of these people may be some of the bigger what uh influencers singers or whatever but all of their influence i mean you know it's 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 been a black man but not to to, to do the divide and conquer thing it's black men and women together i'm just saying the black man ha has the most uh influence on um on this culture but in terms of family culture it should be black women but we're 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 not we're not together as a family unit like that but you know to blame kevin samuels you know who's been gone for five six months or whatever is just insane you know it's it's that thing of she was upset with laura ingrams for saying to lebron james shut up and dribble she basically told black men shut up and get in line you know follow black women and then you you blame someone who's not here that's just crazy that that's why you know I, i've been saying and i'm going to keep saying the hate against kevin samuels was about um all black men he's just a proxy for all black men and then of course Tariq is the easy target since he's still alive and he's been more political kevin samuels wasn't even political like that you know he wasn't saying to, to vote or not to vote he did express that you know he was a republican but that's his personal thing he never said hey get on the republican train you know what i mean so they're reaching for straws here and it's still blame black men treat black men like children you know basically big mama has spoken so y'all get in line and that's the way that they think that uh, we're going to operate. And I wonder if it has a lot to do with her, you know, her mom being sing uh, being a single mom or whatever. So I'm, I'm guessing her dad wasn't around because, like I said, I couldn't find even a mention of his name. But, um, you know, this is <sighs> we got to keep fighting back, brothers. It's, it's, it's a thing. Look, let me say brothers and sisters, those brothers and sisters or those sisters who rock with black men and want to build traditional nuclear families black families you know we got to keep fighting against this because this isn't something that is going to go away it's going to continue um un, you know unfortunately they're going to send out the bootlicks like tiffany cross the joy reeds hell like i say even roland martin and that and that simp cliff albright uh, and you know the chipmunk with the nuts in his mouth but uh anyway um